John Wesley established City Road Chapel or Wesley's Chapel in London in 1778. It's now known as the Mother Church of Methodism. Wesley Chapel is a, a beautiful church, uh, a Methodist church, of course, uh, with worship services on Sunday, a very, very um, engaged and expansive congregation, uh, people singing in many, <laughs> speaking in many languages, uh, singing together beautifully on the Sunday in which we worshiped. There is an expansive museum underneath uh, the church with uh, paintings and memorabilia from the Wesley's uh, life and journeys. And the house next to the chapel is the house where John Wesley lived uh, in London for, for many years. There is a small room that was his prayer closet where he, he spent time each day early in the morning at 4 a.m. Uh, there, there are numbers of things in the, on the first level of the house, his preaching robe, uh, and when you see his preaching robe, you realize that indeed when he stood to his full statue, he was all of five foot three. He was a very small man. Wesley preached his first sermon in the chapel in November 1739. What sort of a preacher was he? Well, um, I don't know about your congregations, but if you ask that question in a congregation, you would get perhaps as many answers as you had people in the congregation. Uh, I think uh, I can say this. The general um, impression was that George Whitfield and Charles Wesley were better preachers in the sense of engaging with their audiences. Um, John was, at least in origin, very academic. He'd been through Oxford, he preached in the university church in Oxford, he knew how to construct a, an academic theological sermon and if you read some of his sermons they read in such a way as you can wonder how these sermons actually enthused miners or farm workers or the people that he that he went out to preach to i think over time wesley adapted his preaching style to the nature of the audience but we can not know that City Road Chapel was the center of Methodist works and a place of service to those in the community. Um, it was a relatively small building, but they managed to do a great deal in that small building. So in addition to the, the preaching place, the sanctuary, they had a school for both boys and girls. They had a clinic. They had a book room because Methodists from the very beginning were urged to be reading people so they published their own books and stocked other people's books in order that Methodists should have material to read. Um, they had an arms house for elderly people, and it was also the place from which they reached out to the community. So City Row Chapel served Methodists and the people of London. The type of people were across the social spectrum, but of course, because the poor were the most needy, they were the ones to whom Wesley most went because he said, go not just to those who need you, but to those who need you most. John Wesley died in 1791 and is buried in the garden at the back of City Road Chapel. A statue of Wesley on horseback stands in front of the chapel. I have been here now for 12 years and it's always tempting when you walk into Mr. Wesley's house to take off the alarm or you go into the museum or you go to the grave for it to become a commonplace because you do it every day. But because we have visitors, Methodists from all around the world who come here on pilgrimage and for whom this will be the one and only visit and who are absolutely um, in awe of the place and who want to soak up every bit of their own heritage, it constantly reminds us of what an important place we have custody of, not for ourselves, but for Methodists worldwide. And it constantly sends us back to read Wesley, to think about him, and to remember the legacy and the footsteps in which we tread.